so so oh. going back to tributes and stuff um with with um correct me if i'm wrong but i believe the end of the show after billy eilish's award i want to say they played uh bill withers lovely day as they were going off yes uh, so i think i had turned it off by that point as so, soon as so i i don't blame you because the billy eilish award was super oh. um Anyways, my my thought was last year they did that whole big, which I was not a fan of, that whole big I sing the body electric thing at the end of the show. Wouldn't if I mean in a year that we lost Bill Withers, like what about having just a ton of musicians come out and do like a, a like a lean on me going out of the, the show? Like would have been a great finish. Yep. Mm -hmm. Would have been a phenomenal finish. Yeah, like I don't know. I'd have loved yeah. to see something like that. They yeah. failed on the ending. Yeah. So somebody mentioned the Black Pumas, but not not too long. That was to me one of my favorite performances. And I always come away from the Grammys like like looking to drill down on one band or one album. And that was the one. I started listening to them on Monday. I, I really enjoy that album a lot. I think I'm going to be a big fan. I mean, I had heard of them prior to this. Yeah. Kelly and I had seen them on, I think, the VMAs or something else. That song, Colors, to me, is just it's so catchy and cool. But that whole album, and I, and I got turned on by that performance. And the Dua Lipa, uh, Lipa, whatever, it was amazing. It's funny. She came out doing Levitating with the kind of a long house dress, you know, uh, and I was like, well, that's nice, but she's got a pretty nice body. Why isn't she showing it? And then so for Don't Start Now, it's almost like she heard me and stripped that off and basically, basically did that second song in a bikini, which was very nice to watch. Mm -hmm. And that was another one of those moments where they cut away at one point to Bad Bunny singing along yeah. to her songs. And I thought, yeah. man, that's such a, that was a really cool take, I thought, by the Grammys, you know. Yep. I agree. Uh, any other uh, performances that we loved? Any that we hated? Joe, you want to uh, up Taylor Swift here? Uh, no, m more so the baby. I mean, you know, him being from Charlotte, and I mean, he's really been repping North Carolina hard, and we don't have a lot of, like, well-known people, and him to be that big. He, he just did a version of Rockstar, which is, you know, he said when he wrote it, he was like, I knew this was going to be the biggest thing that I'd ever done, and they just did this stupid orchestra version, and even what he was wearing was stupid. He just kind of... It took the hip hop out of it, and it really made it over dramatic and and corny. It just he he my just problem missed. with my he problem missed. with the choir is yeah. I think every year somebody yeah. does that with with their yep. song. Everybody yeah. does it's a just, choir. It, it's not like I'm sure the first time I saw it, I was like, oh my god, that's cool. You're taking yeah. your song and putting yeah. a choir to it. But you know, 20 years later, it's like, oh, what song is going to yeah. add a choir this year? So right. yeah, that just didn't land for me. No. Um, yeah. That was that was not good. Any other Doesn't. disappointment? Uh, <laughs> like I hey. said, the Roddy Rich I didn't love, and I like the boxer. I love the but box. I just didn't. buy it. maybe it was just too late in the show, maybe. or like I said, it was right after the BTS. That one just was like, oh, just let's get to the record of the year and get this over with by this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for for me, my biggest I guess hate of the the show wasn't toward a specific performance and overall I did love this show but I I think I mentioned it the other day on social media I did not like how far away they went from singing and from from music and I don't know like musicianship and and instruments played live and I don't know if part of that was because of COVID, we don't want to bring in a ton of musicians, although you can, you know, test everybody and a lot of people are getting vaccinated now. But to me, I love the VMAs and I love the Grammys, but to me, they were always very different things. And the Grammys were more about real performances and, you know, real musicians playing and a real singer singing. And so I was disappointed. I think my biggest hate was how, how lip synky it got. And it's like, okay, if you have maybe one performer that's going to really dance a lot, like I get it, but it was just like, I felt like half the show was lip synced and pre recorded backtracks, or you didn't see the musicians playing the songs. And one of my favorite Grammy moments ever, it's probably my second favorite Grammy moment ever, was uh, Adele singing George Michael's Fast Love with the mm -hmm. giant orchestra. And, and she stopped. I'm Right? And I'm not a huge, I like Adele, but I'm not a huge Adele fan. And I, I'm not even a huge George Michael fan. Again, I like him. Although Fast Love is my favorite George Michael's song. And I am I still randomly will bring up that performance on YouTube. And, and I almost brings me to tears. And so I felt like it was missing 
you know, the live music and, and the, the concepts, the things like that, that would happen, you know, in a normal Grammys, it just felt too VMA esque to me. So I, I, I agree with that, Dave, to me, the Grammys are always about, they, they always put these cool collaborations together. Um, Elton John and Eminem would, that was a Grammys moment. Uh, Prince opening up with Beyonce. That was on the Grammys. Uh, Usher and James Brown with Jay-Z. That was, uh, I'm sorry, Usher and, and James Brown playing together. Jay-Z, Linkin Park, and Paul McCartney. That was a Grammys moment. I've always been intrigued by, because they have all these great musicians, and that's probably a COVID thing that they just didn't, other than the nominees, they didn't fill the room with past musicians. But that was one of the things I really, really missed this year, that you usually get one or two just super cool collaborations that 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 didn't happen this year so i i did miss that but i understand why it couldn't happen you know lady gaga metallica lady yeah gaga, exactly metallica. those those that those was, yeah. like thinking outside Ooh. the box kind of collaborations Way outside that, the box. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and yeah the other thing i hated was that there was not a rain on me performance with like a giant orchestra because I mean, that video to that song was incredible. And, and Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande both are frequent performers on the Grammys and why they weren't tapped to do something. I'm, I'm also sitting here. Like we talked about this, I think on Facebook yesterday, Mike, you know, why did neither uh, anything by the weekend or rain on me get nominated yeah. for any awards? And then something like, Say So by Doja Cat, which, you know, I like that song. It's a fun kind of poppy dance song. But to me, that's not deserving of, of a record of the year nomination, especially over something like Blinding Lights or Rain on Me. But that's just my take on it. The only thing that was great about Doja Cat being nominated was in her video piece, she had the quote of the night. She said, I haven't been waiting for this my whole life. I've been preparing for it. Mm. What mm. a great freaking quote that mm. was, man. Mm. I'm, yeah, but I agree. I, I don't think Say So was in the top 20 songs released last year. And I can't believe Blinding Lights wasn't nominated. And I, I think it probably should have won for record of the year. Um, oh, and The weekend was mad, too. I don't know oh, if yeah. you... No, he's done. He's, he he's not going to submit it. He's, yeah, he's not going to submit his music ever going forward. Like he's done, done, done. Like he's done. Uh, by the really way, Mike, my, my quote of the night was was Megan the Stallion saying, "When I was coming up in this industry, I oh, just yeah. asked myself what would Beyonce do, and then make it a little more ratchet." Ratchet. <laughs> that was, was my quote of the night. That was That's cool. Ryan. That, that was, was cool. amazing. Um, any other um, highlights or lowlights? Any any uh, awards other than record of the year? I think we all kind of disagree that shouldn't have gone to Billie Eilish. She was so last year. Uh, any other that stood out that we want to talk about? I mean, I, I was surprised that Beyonce, I didn't know that Beyonce was on the precipice of, of breaking the record all time for most Grammys. And I was even more surprised to find out the person that she overtook was Alison Krauss. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess yeah. Alison Krauss has, has written a lot of songs, I think, as well, as in, in addition to being a singer. And I'm assuming that's part of where she has so many uh, Grammys from. But, yeah, I was I was surprised. Um, I was kind of surprised at that. And and they made a big deal about that, but they really didn't make a big deal about Taylor Swift. She becomes the first female with three albums of the year. First female. And she ties, get this, Sinatra, Stevie Wonder, and Paul Simon for that for that honor. Whoa. That's pretty amazing. Wow. Three albums of the year. Um, and that's pretty good company for Taylor Swift. And by the way, I thought her performance was really good. My my only problem with the performance until the very end when they pulled away from that forest scene, I couldn't tell whether it was live or whether all of that was pre-recorded. I wish they had done one of those cutaways to you know, somebody like Billy Eilish watching or something like that. It was just too, it looked too much like a pre-recorded video until the very, very end. That was my only challenge with it, but I loved it. But, and I also thought her winning album of the year was phenomenal because Folklore was the album of the year. Jay-Z, okay. uh, what's his name? Uh, Kanye West should have presented her with the award. That would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, would have, that would have been perfect. Hey, another thing I wanted to mention about the the Eddie Van Halen, and I, I know that was something that got a lot of discussion going about the tribute Big and time. what it should have been. 
Um, one interesting take for me on that, and I do agree no matter what, it should have been longer. And I, I know that people talked about, you know, they should have had his son come out and play. Um, I definitely think there should have been some further level of tribute. And I kind of grew up listening to Van Halen and I love Van Halen. Um, an interesting thing though, to me was my son champ was sitting there watching it with me. And sometimes when you have kind of the, the innocent observation of children that is not really jaded by the world. It's interesting to hear sometimes their thoughts on it. And Champ's very into music. And obviously Kelly and I have educated him about music that came before his time. And he actually looked at me when they showed Eddie playing eruption. And he said, dad, he said he was so good. They couldn't get anyone else to do it. So they had to replay him playing. That's correct. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they could. I was kind of going to say more, that earlier. I, yeah, totally agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as opposed to Little Richard, who Bruno Mars did an amazing job impersonating whoa. or or whatever. I, I love, and it, I'm not even a big Little Richard fan, Me but I, I love that. Yeah. I was whoever they put on the piano destroyed that guy. That oh, guy that oh yeah, him. he was yeah. he was going in. He smashed. My only challenge with that, and I I mentioned this earlier about a programming note. They did a bad job going from that then into the Lionel Richie uh, singing lady. Whoa. Because again, it was just too much of a downer. Like I would have put Lionel that Richie first. And then I would have, and I know the Brittany Howard, Chris Martin walk on was, was a big bold ending, but I still probably would have ended the tribute segment with, with Bruno Mars because it was such a high energy moment, you know, celebrate the music end it high energy and then go to commercial from there. And mm -hmm. I also liked how Trevor Noah said going into the tribute, if you want to see even more, go to our website where we have over a thousand names. That was a great way of, because every year they go, they forgot so-and-so. Mm -hmm. So that was a great way of saying, yes, we're going to forget somebody here. Go to our website and you'll see their name, you know? Um, yeah, but see, Johnny Walker wouldn't have been happy if Brittany Howard wasn't. That's true. The, it had uh, to be a, yeah, it had to be a <laughs> segue out. Yeah. You know, it was the one thing I found interesting, and I, I heard a couple people mention it. I thought it was odd the way that the lead in to the deceased um, artist, that, that the, not the fact, I guess, as much that Trevor Noah mentioned COVID, but it, it was almost more so the way that he mentioned it. I felt like the lead in almost made it sound like most of these artists died from COVID, which obviously wasn't the case. And they obviously do one of these tributes every year. And I definitely think, you know, in a Grammys, in any kind of award ceremony and something like this, you know, it's definitely worth mentioning it and definitely not forgetting all of those, obviously, that we've lost from it. But it was, I don't know, it was like the way the text was written. It just seemed, it seemed an odd way that he mentioned it leading into the tributes. And I don't know if anyone else felt that way or not. It was just a little awkward. It felt a little awkward to me. I didn't catch it. It To me, any tributes segment is always kind of awkward because you have this whole night of mm -hmm. celebrating, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's, it's important to do, but it, it's always, I, I know I've, I've told this story on the, on the podcast before when Kelly and I were in Ireland, um, you know, we always try to listen to local radio and we landed, we rented our car, we listened to, uh, and, and they actually in the middle of, songs the dj came on and did like read the eulogy pages so oh, now wow. he's reading like so and so's wake is going to be this friday blah 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 and then so he reads like three or four dead people and then they go into a jingle galway weather and, then, <laughs> and i was like boy that was a hard segue wow. and sometimes you just have to have a hard segue i've never loved it but i didn't catch that day but i'll have to go back and re i haven't deleted it from my hard drive yet so i'll have K to go back casey Kasem would not approve of that mike no. exactly right, <laughs> right. I i'm surprised nobody mentioned the the theater uh people or the or the uh, vendor um the venue people uh introducing some of the awards i thought that was a really mm. good touch by their grammys i thought mm. it was, I, that that really moved me the fact that they were going to some of these like the one in nashville yeah the troubadour the apollo theater guy the story he told about james, james brown, brown telling him to go home and get your, your yeah. report card i thought those were really poignant and and especially for this year when mm -hmm. all these venues have been shuttered uh, i love that touch uh, whoever came up with that kudos
Yeah, I thought that was great. I was actually one of, I had only two or three notes. Of, I had a whole page of notes here that we didn't discuss or didn't get to. And that was actually one of the last things I had. I hadn't crossed off yet. I agree, Mike. I think that was, I think that was great. And it was a great, you know, just, I guess, kind of giving back to, to the venues and giving them some shine and giving the, the issue of how affected they were by this, some, some shine. And I definitely, definitely agreed with that. Another interesting thing I read about, and this would not have really been on my radar unless I read about it, but I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with this, but apparently Justin Bieber was very upset that his album was nominated in pop categories. It wasn't and he said that he very carefully crafted it to be an R and B album. And he was actually very bothered that it was nominated for pop awards and not R and B awards. And again, if he didn't complain about, I don't know if anybody would have really said anything or mm -hmm. thought anything about it, but mm -hmm. apparently he was quite personally bent out of shape over it. Yeah, I do remember reading. That. I haven't listened to the album, but I've heard the hits off of it. It doesn't scream R and B to me. Uh, so maybe he needs to craft that a little bit more <laughs> next time. <laughs> keep you know? crafting. Yeah, keep working on that. Maybe go actually listen to some R and B. Um, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I think something like "Yummy." You could you could argue the beat is R and B, but to me, his voice is still it's so poppy. Very poppy. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. poppy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, any other comments before we wrap? Well, the, the other note I, I had, and you know, I don't know what everyone's, you know, thoughts on this were, was the whole concept of songs being performed, new songs, like, you know, I don't believe WAP was nominated for a Grammy. I, I know that BTS Dynamite was not, I thought it was interesting and again, this was kind of, I guess, trying to pander to that younger audience. I thought it was interesting that they brought in new songs that were songs that weren't nominated for Grammy. Yeah, like, Cardi, like Cardi B did Up, which is, is it could be nominated next year, I guess, but it certainly wasn't nominated this right. year. Right. So. And I feel yeah. like traditionally, I mean, they do some you know throwbacks and tributes, but I feel like traditionally for current music, the Grammys has always brought in most award shows, I think even the VMAs. I mean, if you're performing on there, it's because your song is up for some award, typically award an award that's being given on the broadcast version of the show. So I did find that a little bit interesting. And, and again, to me, that was part of the seeing it as just super trying to pander to, to change the audience of the show. Damn, I, I didn't even think about that, Dave. You're right. I mean, even Silk Sonic, that song just came out last Friday. Like, right, I, right. That that's not even a record. Like, it's a it's literally a single. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. I mean, I mean that had that had to be a super quick turnaround for yeah. them to sign uh, sign them up for that. Now, do you guys think next year th this will be interesting? Do you think the Grammys will keep this format? Not of obviously there should be fans allowed next year. I'm imagining but keep this format of really trying to go younger? Or do you think they'll say, oh, we made a mistake and try to go back to appealing to more maybe like a 40 to 60 year old audience? I think if they are paying attention to the ratings, they'll probably try to change back to something. If I mean, and if CBS has anything to do with it, I don't know if CBS has this show for a multi-year deal or if it's one off but i mean whatever they paid for this year they should pay close to half next year if you know if there's going to be 8 million viewers instead of 16 that's that's a huge difference so they're not they're not going to be able to charge as much for ads clearly obviously right. next year mm. right mm. right and listen the artists i'm sure care about that too because there is something in the music world called the grammy bump where artists and i'm sure nowadays yeah. it's streams but back in the day it was album sales or single sales right after the grammys you got that little bump if you got awards or if you had a great performance or something like that th that bump is going to be a lot less this year because there were just far fewer viewers right there are right. so many people that built their careers off the grammys literally like yeah you know the the critics and the indie people knew about them but i mean even like ricky martin i remember ricky martin going on there and doing la vida loca i, I promise you is, go, ba is go that back a grammy moment or is that a vma moment okay i may be wrong i don't like i, I remember people, distinctly being like holy right, shit who right. is this kid he just smashed Absolutely. that i don't even like the song yeah I, he couldn't look better couldn't dance better like he just killed it. And, and uh, 
I remember same with uh, the Avett brothers that are from here came on back to back. I think again on the Grammys with Mumford and Sons. Hardly anybody knew who Mumford was. I mean, I was kind of like I've always liked them. Avett Brothers came on, and I was like, yeah, North Carolina, let's go. And then the and literally, I think the stage like spun or something. And then Mumford came on and did the cave, and I was like, well, the Avett Brothers just got forgotten because those guys absolutely just destroyed the building. Yeah. And it was literally like a kick drum, a stand-up bass, and then Marcus Mumford just screaming about whatever. So it it's was, in everybody's best interest to get more eyeballs. I mean, it's, it's in the in, it's, it's in your best it's interest in, to crush yeah. it. Yeah, it's in that's the artists. Yeah, yep. yeah. So uh, it's a great question, Dave. I don't know. I don't know next year if they're going to continue down this path. If they have a long term goal of attracting younger viewers, I think the problem is younger viewers just they don't watch. What's the saying? What's it called? Appointment TV. In other words, like watch it live. Uh, younger viewers, just they, they don't ever do that. They'll like somebody said, they'll watch the highlights on YouTube yeah. the next day. Yeah, they'll they'll wh however, they'll get the news. But they've never been brought up where, oh, Sunday night at eight o'clock, I got to be in front of the TV. That's just yeah. it doesn't exist in their world. Right. And I don't think younger viewers either care about as much maybe as our generations did about an award show. And we talk about all the time in our industry that nowadays, if, if a bride's looking for a wedding DJ or a company's looking for a DJ, they're looking at personal reviews of that DJ. They're not looking for a magazine that named this DJ a top critics pick. Like, I don't know if, if someone winning a Grammy award has the same significance right now to like even a 15 year old, as I used to think when I was a kid watching the Grammys, Oh, it was really cool that an artist I liked won a Grammy. And I don't know if kids really care anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I also think it goes to, you know, when I was 15, I didn't have a lot of opportunities to see my artist, my, my favorite artist, or even mm. a little older, 18. You know, mm. you might catch a video on MTV every once in a while, but that was pretty much it. I mean, nowadays, you can you can pull up their video anytime you want on YouTube. You can probably follow them on Instagram. So you're seeing them talk to you and, and you know, their stories and everything else. So that whole like, hey, I've got to watch this to yeah. see my artist is uh, is no longer exists. Yeah. Yeah. I still remember the first Grammys I ever watched as a kid was the beginning of the show the lead of the show was billy joel singing we didn't start the fire and they had pyrotechnics on the stage which for the 80s was like a really big deal right and i just thought it was the coolest thing right so, awesome. so do we want to end the show by scolding the, the DJ one show we haven't been good sean oh billboard music awards we've never even mentioned that yeah the i usually billboard watch those too. yeah 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 mm. It's it's not it's it's still eh, the Grammys. They're completely different than the Grammys. And then going into the Country Music Awards, also, Country Music Awards is still. I like that better than Grammys and everything else, just because of what they do with it. Right. Um, but the Billboard Music Awards, does anybody really watch that anymore? I don't even remember what month it's in. I think that, that's in the fall. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. Fall. September, October, yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the VMAs is around the fall, too. Well, and isn't there now? I feel like so everyone just ju saw an opportunity to make money and jumped on the ba bandwagon because isn't there, aren't there also iHeart Awards now, yeah. I believe? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Dick Clark started the, is it the People's Choice Awards? That was years and years ago, too. So, yeah, I mean, that's, people saw, and I, I don't think they'd see it nowadays, but back in the day, they saw there's, you know, there's gold in them, there are hills with award shows. So uh, more and more started, which also could be one of the reasons why the ratings are down. There's, you know, there's more than one music award show throughout the year. So you don't have to tune into the Grammys, I guess. I don't know. Right. You know. Right. Do yeah. we want and to I mean, they, they also did, this is a new time of the year for them too. I mean, they were typically in February for the longest time. They used to always be the Sunday after the Super Bowl. Right. And then I believe last year they moved them to the Sunday before the Super Bowl. And so now you have them being bumped into March where the weather's a little nicer. Some people are going on spring break and vacations already. I don't know if that plays with it, but we obviously saw a lot of sports ratings last year went down, but I felt like especially the sports that were moved out of their normal time frames, like the NBA finals and the Stanley cup being at, at awkward times. I felt like 
things that got moved out of when people are used to watching them because we are creatures of habit took a bigger hit um you know with, with the all the the covid and moving things around and i don't know if this was moved because of covid or not i believe it was because it was, it was i think Los Angeles still had yeah. Yeah. restrictions when it was supposed to originally be yeah. but um you know that i just could, i just, i would just think what would counter that is so many people are home so right. you know but that like I, right. i'm surprised that television ratings hasn't gone up over the last 12 months just because what the hell else are people doing but i i i guess not watching tv you know playing yahtzee yeah <laughs> yeah so do we want to do we want to just shake a finger at the djs who who not only didn't watch the grammys but basically posted proudly on facebook i'm not watching that trash i mean that boggles my mind yeah, that you, anyone in our industry would take that attitude yeah but, but you get that every year mike you i get know that every know. year and it's just you listen what what we have is um what we have going on right now is a phone is call just <laughs> there's a phone call sorry about that sorry about that the um uh, it's just some of these guys and girls they just don't get it. You know, you got to listen. As Mars, uh, our boy Mars Lawhorn said, free your mind and your ass will follow. Look, if you don't like it, it's okay. You're not, you don't have to like everything. But at least look and learn what you're, you know, if you're going well, to be to me, it's not even a matter not... of liking. It's, it's show research. What You know, if you do a gig this right. weekend... And somebody wants, hey, you got the new Bruno Mars song. You're probably not going to know what the hell they're talking about, or at least you're not going to know why Correct. they're talking about it. And so I just, I, 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 I mean, listen, Joe and I talk about this all the time. We both have a passion for music. I love getting turned on to new music. So for me, it's never been a chore. But even if you don't love it, just sit down and watch it because this could affect what your clients are asking for in the next couple of weeks. Who right. Knows? And can, now they're they're going to have now they're going to ask for more anyway. They're asking because of Spotify and everything else that's going true. on. They True. they want their they know what they want right away and if you don't know it, or at least make it sound like you know it, you're gonna look like a dummy, and right. it's hard enough to you know book work as it is now, but you know learn your craft. This isn't just you know if you say you're a wonderful DJ and a full time whatever, learn it, learn it, learn it, learn it. All right. Well, that's all I had in my notes. And I was going to say I've always watched it. People say the DJ response I feel like I get the most is. I don't care who wins those awards. Well, you can look up who won the awards the next day. For me, even from childhood till now, I've always just watched it as a music fan because I love seeing the performances and the unique performances they do, whether it's collaborations, tributes, medleys, uh, just the sets for the performances. I've just always loved watching it as a music fan and getting yeah. to see a bunch of really good performances. You know, it sounds, it reminds me, Sean, you've invited me to go to a wrestling match and I have no interest. And your point is just for the production value alone. And I would do that. I would go to a WW, whatever E just for the production. I, I, I don't care less about the wrestling and I don't know the wrestlers by name, but I would do that sometimes just to check out the light shows and, and everything else. So enjoy it for that. Um, and now, so, now more than ever, that's the production side. You're right. Yeah. So we can put a bow on this. Joe, any sure. parting thoughts? Any parting? No. Watch the Grammys next year. Watch them. Yeah. yeah. And listen to Dave's new mix. It's it's yes. on uh, Mixcloud, Digital Dave. Thank That's you my guys ride for, for having me and John. Appreciate it. Sean, thank you so much for being on. Dave, thanks, thanks for being our guest. Thanks, guys. A pleasure. Honored. Honored. All right, everybody. Ciao. And we promise next week we will talk about beat mixing. Or is this a two-part is it this is going to be a two-parter. So next week we will talk. This is this will be part two. So next gotcha. week we'll talk about BB. <laughs> <All right. laughs>